Ah, the Roland SH-101. A veritable relic of electronic music history. It's as rave-tacular today as it was back in 1983. But one part of this synth has not aged well, and unless you've already done something to remedy it, by now you're likely faced with a scenario where corrosion has built up in the power switch, causing a whole slew of erratic behaviors. The most notable of these is pitch instability, but I've worked on one where the wonky switch would cause the filter to cease to filter a few minutes into play. That's it. No noise, no crackle, and the rest of the synth worked fine. It just lost the ability to filter. Weird, right? And if accounts on various synth repair forums can be trusted, all sorts of problems on the SH-101 have been traced back to a failing power switch. Luckily, there's an easy test to see if the power switch is causing problems, so without further ado, I'll show you the test, and then I'm going to show you how to fix the switch. And yes, I said fix the switch, because they don't make them anymore, so the only place you can get them is at specialty stores for around $20, and homie don't play that. Now this particular 101, the problems are pretty subtle, but we'll see if you can pick them out right off. And look at that, the filter's already stopped working. But if your 101 has a more subtle issue, then the definitive test to see if the power switch is suspect is to just wiggle it back and forth without actually pressing it in while you play. And if you get something like this, then the switch is fucked and you need to repair it. So I'm going to take you over to the workbench and show you how we do that. that. Alright, first things first, you want to put some padding down on your workbench. I mean, come on, at least give it a cushion to lay on before you fuck it. Besides, you don't want to finish the job and turn it over to discover that you bent the shaft on $200 worth of sliders. Yeah, they don't make those anymore either. In specialty stores, no thanks. So, oh. first thing you're going to do... Now with the control board removed, you want to go ahead and desolder the power switch, which lives right here. I don't know how I ever lived without this thing. So here we have the suspect switch, and now to get into it, to clean it up, we need to remove first this bottom cover, and there's two plastic tabs on either side holding it in place. Oh yeah, make sure that you clean off the solder off of these pins really good before you try and remove the uh, black housing, because otherwise it won't slide off over the pins. Now with that off, you've got four places where the plastic is basically just uh, melted down over the bottom piece here. I don't know if you can see that, but there's right here and there and on the other side. So we're just going to take a pair of flush cutters and just snip those right off. I'll do that real quick. And now, and now, next part, you're going to want to proceed carefully. Carefully. See this spring right here? You don't want that spring to spring, because then you're going to have a bad day. So just slide 
focus first just slide this bottom piece off cover the spring up so it doesn't go flying and now that we've got that off we'll pull that part away and we can get at this circuit board down here this is the bane of the SH-101's modern existence and look at that focus on it it's just disgusting black and cruddy as anything now the way to restore this piece <clears throat> if you've got some deoxit or another corrosion cleaner product you can use that or you can use some fine grit sandpaper I got the deoxit so I'm gonna use that and my preferred tool for this process um, it's a bit of a specialty device but check your local hardware stores you should be able to find one or if not I think they have them at McMaster Car um, but it's a number two pencil and bonus points if you've got the uh, leftover stock that your mommy ordered you when you were eight years old very nice I'm just gonna spray some of this deoxid on here and take the head of the eraser here and just work it over those nasty cruddy contacts You want to do a really thorough job and get down in there in those hard to reach corners you can take the other side of your number two pencil and just kind of draw over the bottoms and the edges of the contacts and then hit it with some more contact cleaner huh huh there we go yeah nice and shiny just what we're after now these three spring-loaded contacts in the green part of the switch if they're also super corroded this is where the sandpaper will probably come in handy and you can just run the wide edge of them across some fine grit sandpaper to just clean up the contacting surfaces there you don't need much, just a bit. And I'll probably also hit these with some deoxit for good measure. Be careful doing this. You don't want to lose these small parts, carpet floors, no es bueno. All right, now that we've got all the contacts cleaned up and looking good, <clears throat> you need to carefully reinsert these guys into the green piece. With the uh, big end sticking up. Oh, God. This might take me a minute. Oh, Jesus. I don't know how many of you caught that, but be careful where you put this spring. Put it somewhere safe when you're working on this thing. My God, what a nightmare if you have to find a replacement. Okay, contacts cleaned. Spring loaded contacts cleaned. Now, to get this thing back together, I'm gonna stick the spring back on the little nub there and then hold it with the shiny side down and just slide it on over carefully and now Holding that all together, 
slide the top piece down. Nope, fucked herself. Okay, let's try that again. I think I got it this time. Into there. Oh, for fuck's sake. Okay, look, I swear this works. It's just the curse of the camera. Yeah, so, we got the switch going back together and sliding it down into the other half. And now, get that seated all the way in, just about, and then pull off this bottom piece without pulling the circuit board out so don't yank on the pins just get that bottom bit off carefully and now take the spring and stick the spring on the nub on the bottom cover Now, slide the two pieces together, line everything up just right, and snap it in place, and moment of truth, does it switch? Of course not. Why would it? Sure, there's a little latch piece on the bottom cover, and you gotta make sure that that little hook there is lined up with its slot in the green piece. So a lot of bits to have lined up just perfectly. If you can't get that little spring piece lined up, see right there it's kind of sticking up weird Take some tweezers and poke it into place, and it should go. Ah! Ah! Bust! Huh? Huh? Okay, I promise that wasn't as hard as I just made it look. Just pay attention to what you're doing. Don't try and shoot a YouTube video while you do this. It's really not that bad. I've done it several times before. This was by far the worst, but... Okay, now, once you get that, before you solder it back in place, let's go ahead and on the bottom side here, just give it a shot of contact cleaner for good measure. And work that in there, good. And now, we can take the bottom cover and slip that back over and don't worry about the uh, little posts that we cut before because this bottom cover holds everything in place just fine and once you've got it soldered in place on the board it's not going anywhere so alright switch fixed I'm gonna get this put back in and go test it out Alright, so my camera batteries died, but today is tomorrow. I've got the SH-101 put back together, and I'll go ahead and give it a test run, see how I did, see if the power switch is behaving better now. So it seems pretty stable to me. Um, can use the filter and the pulse width controls without any weeble wobbling and even jiggling the power switch. It has no effect. So I'd call that a success. Thanks for watching, guys.